All right, folks, we're ready. Welcome to Making Music Magazine. And I'm Chuck Sheely. I'm here today with pa Pedro Eustache. We're sitting here. He's uh, he's the uh, 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 artist spotlight today in our uh, Alternative Instruments Month. He is the master of many flutes, winds, whatever. If it makes noise, he's got it. He's into every part of the world. And I mean, literally, not just the world and the globe. He, he has instruments that represent the entire globe and he can play them, hundreds of them, I believe. And not only that, but he's in the world of music itself. He teaches, he's, he's played with McCartney, he's played with symphonies, he's played with peoples with names you can't even pronounce. He is from, he's, he's into education, games, movie soundtracks, have I left anything out? Jingles, you know? Anyway, please meet my new friend, Pedro. Hi, Chuck. It's a music. blessing to be here with you. God bless you. And thanks to Jason who put us together. God bless you. I'm, uh, I'm honored to be here with you. Jason, yep. Yeah. Bless you. Bless you. I got to say, I think I've always considered myself the busiest, hardest working person I've ever met next to my dad. But when I just read your resume, you know, I, swe I stopped sweating, got up off the floor and applied a few Band-Aids. I, I couldn't <laughs> believe how much you've done. You are quite possibly the busiest musician I have ever. I, 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 I just can't believe it. So, like, have you had any sleep lately? <laughs> uh Chuck, that's, uh, that's a wonderful accolade. God bless you. Thank you. It, it's an exercise in balance, as, as you can imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, and it, in my reality, responds to many different things. Uh, this almost kind of obsessive, compulsive thing is a family thing, but it also responds as a consequence of awareness, which is something I want to share with our, <clears throat> with, with our friends, whoever listens to this. Awareness is the most important key element I can address. My, my gifting is not in facility. Things are very hard for me to do. I have to work like a dog to get them. No, a dog is a wonderful thing. I should not speak like that. That's <laughs> I meant to say I have to work really, really, really hard and break my back practicing in order to make things to, to flow, to, to, to work. My gifting is more in perception, in realizing, in having that awareness that critical thinking thing of realizing something that is good. And then I work very, very hard at developing that. Uh, so the awareness to know what it is God has given me. I'm a believer, not proselytizing, not selling uh, ideology. I respect and love people too much for that. That would be very low, but that's not what my life is about. But as an artist, I owe it to myself, to my reality. My reality is I'm a follower of Christ. And Chuck, everything you said comes as a consequence. This, I don't know if you know this, and I'll put this right off the bat, um, from a, among many other things, but most importantly, out of a huge tragedy my wife and I went through. Uh, we lost our beautiful little daughter to brain cancer 32 years ago. And when you face something like that, um, by the grace of God, we made it through that black hole. And I promise to myself, I'm not going to waste one second of my time in this earth. She completed her mission at three years to nine months. She went to eternity. I said, she's a great lesson for me. I will not, I'm accountable with the beautiful gift God blessed me, God entrusted me with. I need to give him back from what and that's what i've done and the most amazing thing chuck is listen uh i don't understand people who do stuff so that they can get money so that they can live uh, what we have as musicians is such an amazing rare sadly rare reality that sadly we rare. can do our calling and make a living at it can you believe that so I don't have a hobby. I don't need a hobby because I need to make instruments with double holes and where tradition says, you know, a Bansuri from India got six holes. Then I have to make my own that has 15 holes. You know, then I can have access to sounds and sonorities in a, in a very uh, a stable way that we would not have with a traditional thing and like that. And 
limitations out of the reality of me, for example, not being born in India, to develop a technique that would have taken 10 hours a day for 15 years, I got the brain God gave me, so I'm gonna need to find a way, either I give up, I break the flute and throw it through the window. By the way, that's one of the beautiful experiences. Um, July 94, I went to take my first lesson with great Ravi Shankar. I was his, to my knowledge, his only Latin American uh, flautist student. And I was so incredibly crushed by Anushka Shankar. She was 13 back then, imagine that. And she's like a machine gun going through the sitar. And there's Kartik Sheshadri playing the sitar, a senior disciple of Rabiji who's like brilliant. And we're doing Aid Bairav, which is a raga that has two commas, which is two flats. And I'm struggling with this guy here. And I'm going, zzz, zzz, zzz. <laughs> Rabiji paid me one of the most exquisite, delicious insults ever. <laughs> Chuck, he said. Pedro, Sometimes they're good for you when they yeah, come from the right he, place, he, you know? He kicked my booty without permission beautifully. He said, Pedro, I'm sorry, because you know, Indian, he said, uh, I'm sorry, but you sound like an elephant trying to run. <laughs> you when can't even home, make that up. I'm yeah. telling you, when I got home, I said, either I give up, and I'm not a person to give up. I said, I need to find a solution. A few months after that, I came up with this, which gives me all the possibilities and then some more acoustically that I cannot get. And then when I brought this to him, he freaked out. He blessed me and everything. He puts his hand wow. And he told me, you have to patent this because they will steal it from you in India. They've done the same thing with me. So this is, again, all of this is to say, literally, how beautiful, how powerful it is to take a limitation, a disadvantage, and turn it into an advantage. That's very powerful. I love that. That's right. That's very much. That's one of the best lessons anybody could have just as basic human equipment from, from the womb, man, you know? Correct. So, Correct. Yeah. Hey, well, thank you for that. <laughs> and then let me show you real quick. The, I love this, Chuck. This, again, is my, I was born and raised in Venezuela, South America, of Haitian parents. My dad was black. My mom was white. That's why I'm cafe au lait. <laughs> <laughs> but like a label, Moraki, label M. He's a singer for the Lion King. The, oh, you know, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I love it. We toured the world with Hans Zimmer together. You know, and Levo said, no, 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 Pedro. You're Cappuccino, Cappuccino. <laughs> hey, Hans Zimmer, was uh, Tina Guo on that gig? Of course. Are you kidding me? Tina has been from the very beginning. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we had her on the show I've been working a with her for years. Yes, we toured the world. In fact, that was Hans Zimmer Life. Um, I had been doing also the world of Hans Zimmer, which is a completely different project. And for a while, she was sobbing for Marie Spemann at the cellist. So Tina also for, for a while happened in the, the world of Hans Zimmer. Completely different arrangements, completely different everything. Huh. Yeah, 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 yeah. We did that. And I've been Hans's winds guy for 15, 20 years now. And like that, God has blessed me. John Williams and John Depney, John Powell, James Newton Howard. By the way, five of the nominated best score, best uh, uh, original score for the Oscars, I have played in two of them. I played with Terry Blanchard's uh, The Five Blood. I played Duduk, by the way, in that. The Duduk in, nice. in that. And I did uh, News of the World with James Newton Howard. And uh, yeah, so this year is, uh, is uh, in spite of all the craziness, it's, it's a wonderful year. And I wanted to show you something else real quick as well. Aha! Uh -huh. You're going to love this thing. All right. This I'm is, sure I will. This is my flute, right? I mean, let me mm -hmm. let me do the right thing here. My my regular flute, okay? You could so, probably pull out a poster and just like. Make <laughs> it well, that is that is something that comes as a consequence. I was saying, <laughs> in yeah, being born and raised in Venezuela, Chuck, we have to find solutions to things. I've been in the States for over 32 years, but that side of my reality has blessed me because I have to find solutions. We, we cannot just go sometimes uh, to find something to buy. We need to make it. Like if, if you see the outskirts where the poor people live, 
Right. My brother's an architect. He would go there to learn from them. Because what the government used to do was simply to give them the concrete down there, you know, and they live in hills. So they have to design all the cities and all the, and all the stairs with cement and, and put the things. And then the, the rain comes. Of course, sometimes some of them slide. I mean, Malibu slides too. But um, the point is, these things are there. And these people are just poor people that with their creativity have to make do. So right. that, that's an asset I have, to tell you the truth. It, it's yeah. an advantage having been born and raised in a place in which you cannot go and buy everything. But that's because, again, this is a good thing. Uh, important that I'm going to address now real quick, Chuck. All the things you see here. And if people look, you know, they Google uh, my, my, my work in, 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 in the internet. Uh, they might see something I did with Gustavo Dudamel, the, the conductor of the LA Phil a few years ago. He invited me to do something with him. So I composed this, what I call the Sweet Concertante for World Woodwinds and Symphony Orchestra. And it's like 40 minutes long or more. And it's 12, 12 movements. So nine of them are in the internet. And I play all these things. It's a travel through the world with, with all this music and instruments. Basically, that's a result of my whole life of work. Because what happened is I started as a consequence of the influence of my elder brother, Maestro Michel Eustache, that instilled in me a vision from his incredible multi-directional thing that carries consequence in my musical life to this day. So I owe him big time. I also owe a big time to El Sistema in Venezuela with the genius Dr. Jose Antonio Abreu. That movement from where uh, Duda met is third generation. I'm a founder. I'm first generation of that. Oh. I was the first piccolo of the Simon Bolivar Symphony Orchestra, you know, very proud of that. And he got me a scholarship to go study in France and Switzerland. And I was three years, the first flute player for the Venezuela, uh, uh, Simon Bolivar Symphony Orchestra. And that, that's what I meant to say by mentioning all these things is, yeah, it is a lot in many different directions and whatnot. And I know I'm not normal. It's okay. I mean, we all have our, 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 our own things. I always say when my students try to imitate me, I tell them, listen, at the beginning, it's, it's a flattery thing, but you need to find your own. I said, right. don't insult God. He went to the trouble of making you unique. <laughs> so, and, when people, yeah, and when people come in with that, you know, think, oh, Pedro, you're a star. They say, they say, stop. So are you as well. Why? Because scientifically, we are made out of stardust. Exactly the same material, nitrogen and magnesium and, 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 and iron and all this carbon and all those things, literally, of which stars are made of. God took that to make us. And I say, because only knows, because God only knows how to make stars. And so you're one of them too. That's great, man. I, I appreciate that very truth. much. The truth. And the beautiful thing with all this is, this is very powerful, Chuck, is, I started in many of these directions over 40 years ago. I would say 45, 48 years ago. It was like in chemistry, you know, when you have the vases, com communicating vases, you know, one is like this, another one like this, another one. And when you put water in one of them, all of them go up. This is what I've done. I've gone through phases in my life in which seasons and uh, in which I have emphasized more classical then I emphasize more jazz after Europe and doing all the classical stuff in seven years of symphony orchestra total. I, I changed directions completely. I came to Calars. I got a master's in jazz from there. Thanks to my dear brother, Dr. James Newton and many other people. Uh, Calars was an amazing blessing to me. Amazing blessing. David Royston and, and Paul Novros and all of them. Amazing. Ah, that's where Paul Sprague was a teacher. I saw your, your chapter with them. Guitar player. Who? Peter, Peter Sprague. I said, Paul, it's Peter, Peter Sprague. Oh, Peter Sprague? Are you kidding me? He, he was a teacher. He was a teacher at Calarch when I was a student there. <laughs> wow. So, so this is what I love about music. This is yeah. what I love about me. So Peter Sprague is from San Diego. So am I. And so the way I became aware of Peter Sprague is when I was in uh, the college years and my dad was a jazz bassist. How about and that? he was hired to play uh, a couple casuals uh, with Peter. And That's so uh, when, my, when I was able to go, my dad would say, do you want to come? And I'd, I'd say yes, every single time. And I went up and that's how I saw Peter was up in uh, La Jolla 
at a place called Elario's way back in the early 80s uh, with, with that. And so since then, he's become uh, a person that I, I see around town in San Diego a lot, even though I'm here in New York now. But um, and then, uh, yeah, we run in some of the same circles. And so, yeah, yeah we've and become, he's, I mean, uh, it always <laughs> impressed me how how not only personal, but how clean, but how deep his playing is content wise. Unbelievable, you know, like no BS. You, you know what I mean? No BS. BS. He's playing. There's no BS in his. Playing. I re I I revere him so much because so so uh, I had a, a cat playing with me for a while, and he was also very revered in the area. I was very lucky and fortunate to have him as a friend and just an absolute killer player. You know, just wow. He played stuff that I thought was impossible. Anyway, his favorite guitar player was Peter Sprague. And he'd go see Peter Sprague on our nights off, you know, now and then. And, uh, and um, he would actually weep in the beauty of Peter's music. I mean, to watch a grown man just weep at, at how beautiful it was, was. And I remember his wife teasing him, saying, you know, what are you doing? And I'm like, I just slapped her. I said, you leave him alone. You know, like, I want him to go here you know and because <laughs> like i mean what a privilege when you're in the music being moved by the music exactly. in that celestial way you know, and listen that, that, that is, is right there chuck you hit something cardinal to me <laughs> the greatest musician of all times johann sebastian bach said that the purpose of music was twofold to glorify god and to sublimate to elevate the human soul which is what you just mentioned that's right since I'm 17, I set out to do this. I said, he's my hero. I want to emulate him. This is what I want my life to be. And God has blessed me through that. So, and Chuck, uh, literally, I mean to something very deep called musical phenomenology, okay? Which is a science that searches to regulate the laws through which sound can move our consciousness into transcendence. Literally, is the, is the science that studies the laws of how we can experience music is a very profound thing musical phenomenal music phenomenology and i have experienced stuff like you just said that transcends this physical material reality and that is such a gift from god and that's what i want to keep doing for the rest of my life i want to keep glorifying the creator almighty uh who in his amazing love has blessed us, even during these very difficult times. I want to I wanna encourage people. Uh, listen, maybe they have had, like me, near people, near to them, even family, relatives that have died of COVID. But listen, in the midst of this thing, we have now the light at the end of the tunnel. I think this will not be forever. We'll go through this. God is blessing. Uh, last year, Chuck, was my best year ever. And I was at home, recording from home. And it's like, I am so impacted by how in the midst of tough things, still I can see the hand of God at work. And that blesses me tremendously. So I want to encourage people to, you know, do music so that we can even make this planet a wonderfully less painful place to live. Amen. I, I, I am so happy to meet you. This is, I have all the exact same thing to say right back at you. I mean, my music comes from that place. Good. And to hear you say that, it's nice to know that I just made another friend in the world. God bless you. You know, you be right right. I, was, I was reading Kenny Garrett yesterday. He said the same. He's on writing. His interview with San Francisco just like, And I'm like, whoa, many of us believe the same. We, and you know, when I'm touring with, with Hans, with his music, Chuck, I'm crying on stage. Well, this you know, I mean, another place. I mean, really, just really. I mean, why is music so unimportant uh, to some that they don't want to pay for it or they don't feel like it's this way when really, like, it is the only thing there is on the planet that can make everybody, regardless of what your affiliation is or what you disagree about, you can still dance together. I agree. It is through the language agree. of music. It is a voice of you know, God. Kind people of like thing. that that don't get it, I'm sorry, I pity them. <laughs> All right. 
I do too. I need, I need to be I compassionate feel, I feel because great, you know, like I have a better life than rich men. You know, are you like kidding me? Hey, hey Chuck, what we have is priceless. You cannot put a money right. price on what we do. Right, right. Forget about it. All right, my brother. Well, thank you very much. This has been uh, one of my very favorite conversations. Oh, bless you, Chuck. And I hope thank to you, see you out there and uh, shake your hand sometime, man. Um, but that will come. You know, that will come because now, like we said, you know, we're, we're starting to see some light. The vaccines are coming. You know, I can't wait. The funny thing is I'm not old enough or, or sick enough to qualify yet. <laughs> yeah. My turn is coming. And I'll be yeah. uh, Listen, Chuck, I cannot thank you enough for this opportunity to change, to, to share is what I meant to say. And please do feel free to edit things. You know, you know we wasted a little bit seconds looking for the thing and whatnot. Yeah, and we cut the whole thing down to two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but really, it's... <laughs> what, 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 I, what I meant to say, which I started and I didn't finish that idea real quick, is it's not that I have been doing this only now. Everything I've been doing, I've been carrying for 45 years. I just emphasized certain things at certain points, like I played the flute only for 10 years before picking up the sax again and things like that. So now yeah. things do like the communica communicating uh, vases things do affect one another. When I play duduk a lot, my soprano sax gets better. And when I play bansuri, my flute gets better. And like that, when I play- I call that compound intelligence. Exactly. And each one affects the other. By the way, Chuck, tomorrow, this is a premiere. I'm giving you an exclusive, okay? We did this recording on March 31st. Tomorrow will be April 1st, okay? Tomorrow, and I'll send you the link later. Because okay. I'll have it tomorrow when it comes. You're going to love this, my bro. I finish with this, I promise. Tomorrow, the neuroscientist department of the Cambridge University, of Cambridge University, is putting out a, a little video, a barely 10 minutes video of while we were touring, I was in London at the O2. We did 18,000 people there in November 2019 with, with the day before. Two PhDs from Cambridge, led by Dr. Uh, Andres Canales Johnson, Cambridge, put the sensor in my brain, and for five hours, they registered my brain activity, both while playing classical or fixed things, and after a control of five minutes each time, completely improvising from zero. That little video will come alive tomorrow from the Cambridge wow. Department of Neuroscience. I can't so, wait to see that. Yeah, you, it's amazing. Direct me to that. We'll, we'll I, I will, I promise. I'll send you, I'll send you the, the, the link tomorrow. Awesome. But yeah, this, this is a first and nobody knows this. I'm giving you a completely first here. Thank you so much. I Thank received so the much. information today that it'll come tomorrow. All right, well tell everybody who's watching today where, where we can find you. What's your website? I'm pedroflute.com, pedroflute.com. And awesome. my name is Pedro Eustache. If you put Pedro Eustache with uh, quotation marks and you put flute, you're gonna see a gazillion things in there. Please visit me on Instagram and Facebook. I got like five different pages on Facebook, whatnot. But it's uh, most importantly, more than anything, uh, Chuck, I don't do this as a business. I'm not good at that thing. It's a miracle I can make a living at this because I'm not business oriented. Um, but, but it is a blessing to be able to communicate with people through this social media thing and to be able to share the blessings God has allowed. So like you to do this. Thank you. Thank you so much. I really, I, I, I'm very grateful for this. So thank you. Okay, folks, if you had a good time, make sure you go visit Pedro Eustache at his websites and all his social medias. Make sure you hit the like button here. Subscribe to our newsletter. Like our, our, our YouTube page, all our social medias, stay in touch, keep practicing, keep playing, keep playing music, and have a great day. Excellent. God bless you guys.